Today, I'm going to share with you a powerful reality creation technique that most people don't actually know about. And this is so powerful that once you get this down, people will start thinking you're a magician. You'll be one of those people who says they're going to do something and that thing materializes. But I assure you, there's no magic involved here. It's all rational and I'm going to explain it to you. It's called segment intending. So this concept was popularized by Esther Hicks, the new age teacher, but it's been around for thousands of years under different names and it's quite powerful. So this is how it works. You break your day up into segments. Now, the number of segments you want is up to you. You got five segments, you got 20 segments. A segment could be something such as your morning routine. It could be your commute to work or uh, taking a shower, just different periods of your life when you're moving perhaps from one room to another room, from one activity to another activity. So the idea is you're combining visualization and mindfulness and intention all in one to better curate your life. Let's say you wake up and you're about to move into your morning routine segment. So just jumping into it and getting carried along with the flow of habit, with the flow of life, you just spend a little bit of time to visualize how you want your morning routine to go. Perhaps exercising is part of your morning routine. You have to go to the gym. So you visualize yourself smashing your PR, having an amazing workout, being very warm and stretched out, no injuries. Uh, you just visualize the best. You're mindful of where you are right now, your intentions, your goals. And once you have that in your mind, and you've set forth that intention, you then move forward into the morning routine. Let's say you do the gym and it goes great and now you have to commute to work. So you visualize yourself having a safe drive. You put the intention out there. You stay mindful of the fact that you are a safe driver and see how that feels. Then you move into that next phase of your life and you keep doing uh, as many segments as you want in order for you to go from A to B to finish the day. I said you could break the segments into small pieces. Let's say you have a surprise presentation that you have to do at work. So before you do the presentation, just visualize yourself killing it. Visualize exactly how you want it to go, how you want the crowd to receive you. Then you go into it. So you might be wondering, how does this work? Isn't this just a whole bunch of mind stuff, visualizations? I've heard this before. Not quite. It works very well and there's actually been a study that was done on something similar. So there's this British study that was done on 248 people to see how many of them could motivate themselves into exercising. So it was done over the course of two weeks. There was three groups. Group A was the control group who did nothing. They were just told to exercise. Group B was the motivation group. They were given a lot of motivational material. Uh, to help them make the rational decision to exercise. So material that was telling them about the benefits of exercising, etc. Group three was the implementation intention group. I'm going to explain what implementation intention group is in a second. But here are the results. The control group that was told to do nothing, 38% of them actually exercise, which is a pretty good result. The motivation group, only 35% of them exercise, which is less than the control. So less people exercise after viewing motivational material. The implementation intention group had 91% of the people exercise over the course of two weeks. It's almost a 100% success rate. That's amazing. More than double with the other groups. So what's the implementation intention? An implementation intention is just a simple statement that you can say or write down, preferably writing down. It basically is in this format. When this happens, I will do this. When the alarm clock hits eight o'clock, I will get down and do 20 push-ups. When I'm at a red traffic light, I will take five deep breaths. It's just a way of keeping yourself accountable. And what they found is that if you write these things down, you are a lot more likely to do the thing that you have written. We have that consistency bias uh, where we want to be consistent with the person we believe we are. So when you write it down, you don't want that cognitive dissonance of going against yourself. You're more likely to do it. So writing down goals is so important. So a segment intention is basically similar to implementation intention because it's a implementation intention on steroids. You're not just doing a one-off plan for some objective you have. You're consciously going through your whole day with intention, being mindful, being more present to the moment as opposed to getting dragged around with the flow of events. You are being the architect of your life. And this is very powerful because the masses of humans are asleep. And once you grasp this 
idea or being the conscious creator of your life, you will wake up and be able to be a mover and a shaker, be able to set forth your intention, your will on the world. Because most people have no idea. That's why they're so easily manipulated by others, by the elites and whatnot, because they are sleeping sheep. This is something that ancients knew. I was recently reading The Kabbalion, which is a book which talks about the teachings of Hermes, who was supposedly some godly figure of the Hellenistic period. This is ancient Greek and Egyptian knowledge, occult knowledge about how the world works. And it's broken down in seven principles. Now, principle six is the law of cause and effect. It basically talks about how there's no such thing as chance. There's no such thing as probability. Chance is just an effect from an unknown cause. So when you think about the weather, this dynamic chaotic system, the weatherman has to tell you that there will be a 90% chance of rain because they can't tell you for certain that there will be rain. At any given time, there could be some cause that wasn't accounted for that causes the rain to not come or causes something else to happen. This is called a chaotic system, something that's very, very dependent on initial conditions. Still not clear on chaos. Oh, oh it, it, it uh, simply deals with predictability in a complex system. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Right. Okay, now freeze your hand, freeze your hand. Don't move. I'm going to do the same thing, start with the same same place again. Right. Which way is going to roll off? Let's say back. <gasps> it changed. It changed. Why? Because tiny variations, uh, the, the orientation of the hairs in your hands. Hey, Alan, look at this. Um, the amount of blood distending your vessels, imperfections in the skin, microscopic, mm -hmm. microscopic, and never repeat and vastly affect the outcome. That's. Unpredictability. If you were to have a supercomputer that could compute all the billions and trillions of variables that were involved with the weather, you will be able to predict the outcomes with incredible precision. But we don't have such things. So these things that we call chance are just causes we don't understand. And here is what the Hermetist had to say about it. Listen to this because this is quite profound. The masses of people are carried along obedient to environment, the wills and desires of others stronger than themselves, heredity, suggestion, and other outward causes moving them about like pawns on the chessboard of life. But the masters rising to the plane above dominate their moods, characters, qualities, and help to play the game of life instead of being played and moved about by others' wills and the environment. They use the principle instead of being its tools. The master obeys the causation of the higher planes, but they help to rule on their own plane. In this statement, there is condensed wealth of hermetic knowledge. Let him read who can. So what they're saying here is the plebs or the normal sheep people allow lots of things to affect them. Lots of causes, the government, teachers, their job, their boss, their family, they are a victim to life. Whereas the masters, those who understand this ancient wisdom are able to dominate their plane of existence. In your life, there's a lot of things that you are the cause of, but you just don't know about it. Things such as your health, things such as how much money you have, your relationships. There's a lot of elements that you have direct power of, your plane of causation. There are things you don't have power of. If there's a hurricane coming tomorrow, you can't stop that. You're not a wizard, but you could move away from it. You always have options on your plane of causation. That's what they're talking about here. So with segment intending, you are leveraging those options. You are consciously deciding what you want to do and then reaping the benefits of those effects. Whereas most people would just go throughout the day without thinking too much about what they want to do, how they want to experience things. So they are being the effect of someone else's cause. So snap out of it and become more aware of your day-to-day -day actions. Don't fall into the trap of allowing the subconscious to take over. The subconscious is very powerful. It's very powerful, it's the habit mind and it makes things cruisy, it makes things automatic. When you're driving, of course, your subconscious mind is taken over and it's quite safe in that regards. But if your life is not optimized the way you want it to be, you need to go back to the conscious mind and consciously 
plan out what you want to do. Consciously program things so that your subconscious mind can have better programming and that your future automated tasks are of a higher level than what you're doing right now. Do this and I promise you'll be one step closer to living and dying well. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell notifications so we can see more of each other. Until next time.